So uh, for 39, they're giving us the integral that represents the volume of a solid, and they want us to describe the solid. Uh, so for this one, we have that it's the integral, uh, the integral of pi from 0 to pi times sine of x dx. So what we've been looking at so far, we've been looking at these, um, at these curves, that when we revolve it about the x-axis, and we know that we're revolving about the x-axis because there is a dx, right? Because we're summing up these cross-sections across the x-axis. So we've been doing with these solids of revolutions using a, um, using a, a circle, right? So the height of that the height of that radius is just the function. So whenever we're summing these up, we're summing these up across the x-axis. So this is the integral, let's say, from a to b, right? From a to b of pi r squared, where r is the f of x. So pi uh, f of x, f of x squared dx. So that's really um, the integral when we take it and we sum it up across like so. So when we compare it, uh, we can see that it's the exact same scenario where we're integrating from 0 to pi. And the curve here is not sine of x, but actually square root of sine of x, right? Because this whole thing would be squared. Um, so basically, from here, we can say that, um, describe the solid. So the solid is obtained by rotating rotating uh, the curve uh, the curve y is equal to sine of square root of sine of x um, about the x axis from from 0 to 0 to pi and that's the solid that we get um, and that's the, the equation that we would get if we had that curve and we revolved it about the x-axis in that uh, interval.